Coming up on We Talk News this week. I believe, I think we also at this table believe, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. VP Kamala Harris hosts a cannabis roundtable at the White House and add her to the list of those calling for legalization. Plus, just when you thought the New York State cannabis rollout couldn't get any more dysfunctional, OCM's Damien Fagone gets suspended for his personal attacks on Jenny Love's founder, Jenny RG. And after their first lawsuit gets thrown out, another one is filed by a few Massachusetts companies against the USA and AG Merrick Garland, claiming that the Controlled Substances Act prevents them from running their business and operations and that the legal landscape is allowing interstate commerce amongst legal states, even though the plant continues to cling to its Schedule One classification. Plus, MSO giant Curaleaf is leaving its three-year-old retail operation in Maine in a move to cut losses, while Germany passes the final vote to start legalization on April 1st. A Greek police officer gets busted for transporting 225 pounds of weed in his patrol car. You just can't make this stuff up. You're looking live at the newest edition of the New England Cannabis Convention here at the Heinz Auditorium in Boston. Hi, everybody. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media. We're covering NECAN this weekend, and it's one of the reasons why we're moving our full We Talk News show from Friday's release to Monday's. But without any further ado, it's now time for We Talk News with Elena Pinto. Don't go away. We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Weed Talk News, Pro Cannabis Media's weekly review of cannabis news from coast to coast. I'm Elena Pinto. There's been some history over the past few weeks in Washington, D.C. and here in Massachusetts. First, the President Joe Biden mentions the injustices of cannabis possession crimes, and his Vice President Kamala Harris holds a roundtable at the White House where she declared she wants cannabis legalized. Add that to Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey's declaration of a pardon to all past cannabis possession crimes in the Bay State. We had that for you last week, but this week we get to hear from Normal's Chris Goldstein, who was in the room for the White House Roundtable Talk with Vice President Kamala Harris. PCM founder Jimmy Young has that story. I believe, I think we all go at this table, believe nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. And what we need to do is recognize that far too many people have been sent to jail for simple marijuana possession. Yeah, I I have to say it was a striking moment. Um, Vice President Harris was sitting at the front of the table underneath the portrait of Theodore Roosevelt on his horse in the Roosevelt room. And she raised her hands and she said, you know, I'm just going to say it. We need to legalize marijuana. And, And taking a moment to express it exactly that clearly. Again, I think that we're what we're seeing is the White House adapt to the 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 communication that we need with our community here. Goldstein joined the White House Roundtable with the governor of Kentucky, Andy Beshear, legendary rap artist, Fat Boy, and many past offenders of federal possession crimes, including himself. But on 4-20-2013, about a thousand people showed up and we had a grand old time, let me tell you, great photos, and no one was arrested. But when we showed up in May, there was about 400 armed, tactically armed law enforcement officers waiting for us and the U.S. attorney there outside waiting to prosecute us like on the spot, essentially. Um, I ended up getting um, two citations for smoking marijuana at those protests. And then they took me to federal court over half a gram of cannabis. So I, uh, 10 years ago this month, I stood before a federal judge in Philly and it I can tell you it was one of the scariest moments of my life. For that act of civil disobedience, Chris was fined $3,000, given probation for two years, and has lived with the repercussions of having a record for the past 10 years. Now, that record has been pardoned, but not expunged, and there is a difference. Chris shared why this moment of openly talking about the injustices in the country's federal cannabis laws with a vice president who, when she was an attorney general in California, earned a reputation for being tough on weed crimes. 
That has changed, as has President Biden's record on the war on drugs. Again, she talks uh, in context of having experience with it. President Biden himself was a different kind of what we call drug warrior. He wasn't a prosecutor, but he ended up uh, promoting some bills that threw a lot of people in prison. And I do think that is what is poignant about this moment, Paul, is that We've asked every White House for 54 years to do something, anything, and take executive action in some positive direction, especially when it comes to just broad clemency of any sort. This is the first White House to do that. Recognition of injustice is one positive for the cannabis reform movement. And now the biggest question remains about what and when will the DEA get around to descheduling or rescheduling cannabis from its most restrictive Schedule One of the Controlled Substances Act of 1970. The Vice President, Kamala Harris, made her appeal at that same meeting. I believe that the promise of America includes equal justice under the law. And for too many, our criminal justice system has failed to live up to that core principle. We have gathered today, however, to address specifically the injustices that we have seen in federal marijuana policy. I have said many times, I believe, I think we all both this table believe, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. And what we need to do is recognize that far too many people have been sent to jail for simple marijuana possession. And the impact is such that in particular, black Americans and Latinos are four times more likely, four times more likely to be arrested, arrested for marijuana possession. And the disparity is even larger when you talk about the subset of black men and Latino men. Now, late breaking news out of Washington, D.C. has the Food and Drug Administration recognizing that cannabis does have medicinal applications and has urged the DEA to move its classification to Schedule 3. So now you have the Health and Human Services recommending a schedule change and the FDA and the White House. The DEA is notoriously slow in making any decisions, and they've already missed the president's deadline at the end of last year. So you have to think if they've got the message. Well, now we start our state-by-state roundup. Here's Lavana Vassal. I'm Lavana Vassal from the Bay Sash reporting for PCM with this week's California report for We Talk News. California tax reform across the state continues to be the hot topic between industry and local politicians. At stake is a battle over a potential tax hike if sales continue to go down. California Normal's office rejects any increase in sales taxes since the industry is already overtaxed. They are claiming that the already existing taxes have been moved into other programs than the ones they were created for. A big question in the Golden State Has California grown cannabis been getting less potent? Nah, new test state testing results rules are probably the reason why. Back in January, testing standards changed for the THC calculation that averaged a 7% decrease in potency in flour. The debate continues over the percent of THC as the key determining factor for consumers to make a purchase. On top of that, retail dispensaries in California are still banned from offering a smell test, which is so important when you're picking out a strain. Since you can't smell it, you have to be more reliant on testing results and process. Another point I want consumers to know about checking for potency and effect is to look at the whole cannabinoid profile, harvest and package dates, and terpenes. This is even more important when testing results have been proven to change from lab to lab. Retail dispensaries in California are not allowed to open up the jar and let customers get a good whiff of the flowers. So customers must rely more heavily on the test results to help determine their choice. Then there's the issue of testing only one out of 50 pounds to send to the lab for testing. So how accurate is the information being shared with stores who then report those results on their products to the customers? Prop 64, which created this mess of a supply chain of adult use regulations that mandated growers send their tested flour to the packagers and distributors before they end up on the dispensary shelves. And last and not least, terpenes. 
Some test results show terpene content. And the producers uh, take that cost on, by the way, for a more expensive and extensive test. Labeling uh, should also read if there was added or infused terpenes, like the kind people spray on or add to things like distillate vape cartridges. These infusions can be made with natural terpenes from hemp plants or other fruits, or lab manufactured fake terpenes. That's the California Report and some buying tips for you. I'm Lavana Vassa from the Bay Sesh, and that's a Sweets California We Talk News Report. One more note of interest from Massachusetts and Washington, D.C. A group of operators from the Bay State is trying to sue the government again over federal illegality of cannabis in relation to being fair to legal licensed businesses. Verano Holdings Corp, Canna Provisions Inc., Wise Acre Farm Inc. and Giasi Sellers have engaged a New York law firm to challenge the legality of the Controlled Substances Act. And the lawsuit claims that the CSA is unfair and unjust and outdated now that the legal cannabis landscape has changed. After all, 24 states have legalized adult use and more than half of the adults over 21 in this country have access to legal weed in their state. The lawsuit also claims the inconsistencies with interstate commerce, which is not allowed, but is practiced every day amongst the 24 legal states. Washington state legalized adult use back in 2012, but they still have not moved forward on some of the regulations new states are enjoying already. And that is changing as Matthew Friedlander tells us in his Washington state report. Hi, I'm Matthew Friedlander, coming to you from the owner's office here at Skagit Organics with the Washington State Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. I have been out of the office for a few weeks, and this is my first report back since the end of our legislative session. Uh, there is a lot to talk about, uh, so let's just jump right in. The Cannabis Alliance is Washington's largest cannabis trade group. Uh, this is a group that I've talked about in previous reports and I am proud to say I serve on their board. We worked closely with people in the medical cannabis community to get a huge piece of legislation passed this year. The governor recently signed a bill that will remove the 37% excise tax off of Department of Health compliant cannabis products for registered medical cannabis patients. Uh, this will make these products 37% cheaper for registered patients at the point of purchase. Uh, this is just great for uh, people in the medical cannabis community and just a huge win in general for our industry. We were also able to get legislation passed that will allow cannabis licensees to compost their plant waste. Uh, previously, this waste was mandated to be mixed with non-cannabis material and thrown in the garbage. So this biodegradable material will now be diverted from the landfill and into the compost stream where it belongs. Uh, this is a huge environmental win. Uh, this also will make things just easier in general for licensees to get rid of their waste. Uh, we also were able to help get a low potency beverage bill passed. Uh, low potency cannabis beverages are becoming a more and more popular item. Washington State limited the uh, purchase amount of these of these products to 72 fluid ounces, so one six pack. Uh, so a person would only be able to purchase one uh, six pack at a time uh, per day. Uh, and so as these popular uh, products have grown in popularity, uh, this is. Uh, just a way for consumers to be able to purchase more of the things they are telling the world that they want. So those are some of the big wins that we have for you here in Washington. Uh, we also were able to uh, deal with the high THC potency issue here in Washington to some degree. Uh, we were able to take legislation that was proposed and steer it more in the direction of providing money for a study about the effects of high THC, high potency THC products. 
the concern over psychosis, especially for young people, uh, has been presented in many states um, over, over the last couple of years. And so here in Washington, uh, we were able to steer that in the direction of finding out if this actually is an issue and and if it is what is causing it. So that's what I have for you uh, for the legislative session here in Washington State. Uh, I am Matthew Friedlander reporting for Weed Talk News. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Coming up tomorrow on the next part on We Talk News, the New York story continues to be dysfunctional, and now it's gotten personal between Jenny R.G. of Jenny Loves and the Office of Cannabis Management's Damien Fagone. We'll have that on Tuesday on We Talk News. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. What if we're right? What if all of a sudden they discovered that there is medical use for marijuana and, and, and that it is good for you and it's better than alcohol and it's better than opioids and it helps your health? What if we're right? What if they find that out? Specific cannabinoids have medical value. Uh, these are facts. I'm here today in hopes to assist in removing the demonized stigma of cannabis and the perception that cannabis is just about getting high. The true base of this plant has to be known. I don't think anybody should ever go to jail for cannabis. Get some medicine and everybody should have access to it. This is something which at the very, very least is the key to alleviating suffering and extending life for millions of human beings. For returning some kind of balance to our society and quite possibly of restoring our planet's natural balance as well.